In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming summer and kind of just diving into uh, really, or I should say the ongoing summer because meteorological summer actually started on June 1st. But we're going to be really diving into just how this upcoming heat wave could really uh, linger into the month of July and even beyond, taking a look at some short range, medium range, and long range guidance all the way through the end of the summertime. I really, and I feel like I've felt this way since I first started talking about this upcoming summer, but I really feel like it's going to be a hot one in general compared to what's normal. Uh, so be on the lookout for uh, that kind of language that I'm going to be using. I, I, I strongly feel like heat waves are going to be a common occurrence this year. And honestly, uh, I know a lot of you, including myself sometimes, just really can't stand the extreme heat. But I will say that it could help in deflecting some tropical activity at times as typically colder and lower pressure is going to aim uh, some tropical activity straight at the coastlines. Whereas higher pressure and warmer temperatures can oftentimes deflect them back out to sea. So there is always kind of a positive way to look at it. Let's dive into our 500 millibar geopotential height on our European AI model. And this is really going to show us how this heat wave is going to set up. This is by Saturday, just um, this weekend. And what we see is uh, warmer temperatures really beginning to trend upward for the east. And some cooler temperatures beginning to trend southward uh, here for the west. So we're kind of seeing this full swing uh, rotation here, if you can kind of pick up on it. Um, and as we head towards uh, Monday here on June 17th, we really get this full swing strong ridge here in the east. And this is going to be the beginning of these very hot temperatures taking place. We're seeing at least, at least widespread 90s, but there's even been some suggestions of 100 plus degree temperatures throughout you know some of the mid-atlantic and northeast and even uh pushing towards 110 in some areas which is obviously very extreme so definitely definitely uh, a severe heat wave is on the way in the more short range and that is kind of the uh temperatures that we're anticipating and look by thursday here on the 20th things are even worsening we're getting these very very strong signals of a very massive ridge so peaking potentially wednesday thursday friday time frame but really getting started by the early portion of the week so uh really uh, an intense heat wave here let's see what happens beyond it though we've been already talking about this heat wave and it really sticks around through the weekend here saturday sunday of the 23rd um so we see this continuing uh, eventually getting a little bit of a lull there as we reach towards Wednesday, kind of Thursday, Friday of that following week. So that'll be the 26th, 27th, 28th. But right at the end here, we get this kind of look where this, this heat wave slash very strong ridge wants to move back into the east. And we once again see this kind of descending cold air trend over the west. This would maybe point towards a second reemergence here of this potential heat wave which obviously would be very extreme following already a very major one. Here is your European extended models kind of uh, temperature anomalies that it's calling for. This is the 17th through the 24th. So Monday, the 17th through Monday, the 24th, we get very hot temperatures throughout overall the entire East, but especially here over these areas like the plains, Midwest, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes into the interior Eastern States. That seems to be the heart of these warmest temperatures. But again, we can see what we were seeing on that geopotential height screen. We see this really ascending warmth in the east and descending cold over the west pattern. This seems to be really, really the trend here coming up soon. Uh, as we keep going on, take a look into July. We don't really see the cold back down at all. This is the beginning of July time frame. We see heat maybe even expanded westward as well. Uh, so maybe more of it to go around here. Let's take a look at late July. This is as far as this particular model will get. And we have warmth from coast to coast. I would say maybe this is a look of warmth more centered over the central states as opposed to directly over the east or the west, but still a very, very warm look regardless here. And then here, last but not least, is your European model's uh, monthly outlook, your seasonal outlook. Here's for the month of June, but for July, uh, we get a lot of warmth really just trending in for the central and eastern states, especially here. Uh, so again, July of 2024, getting some higher pressure, warmer temps over here over the, by the Rockies, and then especially 
by the southeast as well. So these two corners of the nation seem to be really, really trending in a warmer direction. Um, here is for the month of August as well. So another month here on this model where we're seeing warmer temperatures really trending in here for the Rockies, for the Plains, and then still trickling into these eastern states as well. As a bonus, here is September uh, right here. And we continue to see these trends at warmer conditions, especially across the southwest, plains, and eventually up into the east. Getting further and further northward as we head eastward, as you can see, kind of ascending up the east. And what I mean by that is we're starting out further south here on the western end, more over the central plains, and then almost up into Canada with the peak of those warmer temperatures in the eastern half of the nation at least. Here is the Climate Prediction Center's seasonal outlook for June, July, August timeframe. This is your meteorological summer. And I think they're going to update this soon as this was put out on May 16th. So we can expect an update to this over the coming days. I may show that to you guys in a certain video or, you know, well, we'll see. But I think this is a little bit off as we've seen mostly trends at colder temps over the West. That could be wrong. Uh, but we've seen these models really want to call for this, uh, I would say, this corridor in general to be the warmest. So the southwest, kind of central plains, and then up as we approach Canada. So there is some uh, there is some accuracy to this, especially the southwest being warmer here. I think these pockets is the peak of the above average temperatures on most guidance that we're watching for. Uh, but mostly seeing colder temperatures here over the northwest. And for portions of the southeast, maybe not quite as warm as well. So... Again, mostly these areas here seeing the warmest of the warmest, which we do see it for here and here. So not too far off, uh, but again, could be a little bit more accurate. And I'm sure once we get an update here, we will see some big changes, especially since this area also tends to be one of the warmer spots. And they've kind of indicated this as the cooler spot. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with that at this point, especially if later on in the summer we end up with kind of like a central ridge. Uh, for July, August time frame, I think that this would end up overall being pretty inaccurate. But only time will truly tell, as we've kind of mentioned. Uh, regardless, a very hot summer, I think, from west to east for most areas uh, is, the, is the biggest trend here. So that's going to be something that we're watching for. And again, there is some uh, kind of positivity here as we as we see that these could deflect some tropical activity as opposed to more traffic, troughing and cooler temperatures, especially for the Gulf and East Coasts, of course. Now, anyway, be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.